In Formula 1, reserve drivers are the unsung heroes of the paddock. Like spare tyres, they're usually relegated to the backstage, yet their impact is just as significant as the contribution of the main drivers. But if they're really crucial to the team's performance, why then are they always neglected? And more importantly, what does the best driver on the grid think about them? Let's find out together. Before delving into the nitty gritty of reserve drivers and Max Verstappen's perspective about them, it is only fair that we explain the structure of F1 particularly how it relates to the main stars of the show. Currently, the entire Formula 1 grid comprises 10 teams, each competing with two cars and two drivers in every race. At Red Bull, it's the dynamic duo of Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. Mercedes has seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton and the promising George Russell, while McLaren has Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri. We can go on and on, but the point here is every team in Formula 1 has two top-level drivers available to compete every week. However, they're not immortals. Injury or illness can sometimes rule them out of action, and that's exactly where reserve drivers come in. Essentially, reserve drivers served as backup to the main drivers. They attend every Grand Prix and are always ready to fill in for the lead drivers if necessary. For instance, at the 2022 Italian Grand Prix, Nick de Vries replaced Alex Albon due to appendicitis. Similarly, at the 2023 Dutch Grand Prix, Liam Lawson filled in for Daniel Ricciardo after the Aussie driver broke his wrist. More recently, Ferrari drafted Oliver Behrman to replace Carlos Sainz, who had to undergo surgery for appendicitis. In each of these situations, the reserve driver was a young prospect from the F2 or other feeder series. De Vries was 21 years old when he made his debut, and Behrman was just 18 when Ferrari called him up. However, it is clear that team principals fancy young, up-and-coming drivers from Formula 2 rather than experienced reserve drivers. Ahead of the 2024 F1 season, Ferrari listed Oliver Behrman, Antonio Giovinazzi and Robert Schwartzman as its reserve drivers. However, when it was time to pick a replacement for Carlos Sainz at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, the prancing horse team went for Oliver Behrman, the youngest and least experienced racer among the three options they had. Hypothetically speaking, there are a few reasons for this decision. The first one is that most reserve drivers have other commitments outside Formula 1. For instance, two of Ferrari's reserve drivers actively race in the FIA World Endurance Championship. This means that even if Ferrari wanted either of them to replace Carlos Sainz, they'd need someone to replace them in the WEC as well. Fortunately, the WEC typically operates with three drivers per team, ensuring there's always a backup available if one is caught up to F1. Ferrari knew this option was available, yet it chose to race with Oliver Behrman. Some argue the timing was right, which is understandable, but the disregard for more experienced reserve drivers is too obvious to ignore. Before we go any further, please hit the like button to support our channel. Now back to the video. The last experienced reserve driver to replace a lead F1 driver was Robert Kubica, who stepped in for Kimi Raikkonen back in September 2021. Kubica was 37 years old at the time and only got the opportunity to replace Raikkonen because the Alfa Romeo racer was down with COVID. Since then, the landscape has shifted dramatically in favour of young drivers. Everyone seems to be looking for the next Verstappen, the next Lewis Hamilton and the next Michael Schumacher. To be fair, this approach isn't necessarily a bad one. After all, if Verstappen and Hamilton hadn't made their debuts so early in their careers, they might not have become the exceptional drivers they are today. Nevertheless, as we seek out the next rising star in Formula 1, we must not neglect the old cats as well. The famous argument that most people have put forward is that despite their inexperience, the rookies have performed well when given the opportunity, and that's true. To put it in perspective, De Vries secured a commendable 9th place finish on his debut, while Behrman clinched a respectable 7th position in his first ever F1 race. This highlights their talent and potential to compete among the elite ranks. And perhaps with a little more support and opportunity, they could go on to become world champions. Speaking of support, Max Verstappen is one of the people on the grid who is always showing love to young and upcoming drivers. In his post-race interview, Lawson briefly discussed what Max Verstappen said to him ahead of his F1 debut. Max has always been really, really good to me, Lawson said. I see him all the time, and before the race, he gave me some really nice advice as well. Just don't overthink it and try to enjoy it. Similarly, after Oliver Behrman's fairy tale debut in Saudi Arabia, Verstappen also had nice things to say about the young British driver. What Oli has done has been very, very impressive, said Verstappen. I watched his first few laps in practice because that is where you can judge if someone is comfortable in the car. And by lap two or three, I thought, that is a strong start. And to be 11th and only six tenths off pole at the time is more than you could have asked for. He has done an incredible job. It's always great for reserve drivers to receive this kind of love and support from an established racer like Max Verstappen. However, not all reserve drivers enjoy the same treatment. And even when they do, only a few are able to transition from their part role to becoming full-time Formula 1 drivers. Nick De Vries managed to do it in the 2023 season when he signed for AlphaTauri, but he was sacked after 10 races. 
Although a slightly different scenario, Mick Schumacher is another young driver who has struggled to secure a full-time Formula 1 seat. Riding on his father's pedigree and Formula 2 championship he won in 2020, Mick signed a two-year deal with Haas. However, the reality on track proved less forgiving. His performances failed to match the high expectations and he was let go after his contract expired in 2022. Ever attuned to the trials and triumphs of young racers, Verstappen quickly reached out to the German driver. I talked to Mick a bit, Verstappen said. It is not the end. It's very unfortunate, of course, but he is still young. I hope he gets another chance after next year. Once again, it's incredibly reassuring to hear such affirming sentiments from a world champion. However, the manner in which Nick DeVries and Mick Schumacher were axed from their teams tells you everything you need to know about the fierce competition in F1 and how difficult it is to secure a full-time seat in the sport. For reserve drivers, the uphill battle is even steeper because they don't get enough opportunities to showcase their talents, yet they're expected to show up at every Grand Prix and practically follow the same rigorous routine as the main drivers. While speaking to The Athletic, Alexander Rossi, a former reserve driver for the Marussia F1 team, explains how this scenario works. It's not often that the reserve driver comes into play, Rossi admitted. But ultimately, you go into the weekend preparing and participating as if you're going to race the car. You go to all the same briefings, you go to all the same meetings, you do the track walks, you train with the same physio, you eat the same food, you're on the same schedule. Speaking further on the subject, Rossi reveals what he does to ease the boredom and frustration of being a makeshift driver. So while the guys were doing the cool things and driving, you're sitting either in hospitality or on the pit sand drinking your cappuccinos, playing Candy Crush. Beyond their cameo appearances in Formula 1, reserve drivers have other responsibilities as well. Sometimes, they represent their teams at demos, PR events, and free practice. More importantly, they spend a lot of time in simulation work, sometimes so intense that it lasts several hours. For instance, during the 2019 F1 season, Haas reserve driver Pietro Fittipaldi completed 80 simulated days. According to the Brazilian racer, each session starts at 8am and runs all the way to 6pm with two or three breaks in between. Recounting his experience during this hectic period, Fittipaldi said each of those days you do from 100 to 150 laps. That's easily around 12,000 laps, and for reference, an F1 season is over 1,000 laps when counting Grand Prix and sprint races. In some situations, the main drivers might decide to do the simulator work themselves, just like Max Verstappen does at Red Bull. Explaining why he has taken up the responsibility, the Dutch sensation said, Sometimes the days in the sim are long, but I am convinced that this kind of work is worth doing. As far as I'm concerned, I don't want there to be a test driver working in the simulator like other teams do. I want to work on it myself because everyone has their own driving style. It helps me keep my concentration. After all, there's not much to do at home other than train on the simulator, plus it's something I enjoy. Aside from Red Bull, where Verstappen does the simulator work himself, most lead drivers leave this responsibility to the reserve drivers. And as we all know, it's a very important task because the feedback and data that is drawn from those tedious sessions are used to improve the car. Yet, despite all of this hard work and sacrifice, reserve drivers still get overlooked when the lead racer is unavailable, and that's unfair. Going forward, Formula 1 teams must strike a balance between nurturing young talent and rewarding experienced reserves with meaningful opportunities on track. Speaking of which, we currently have a fine blend of youth and veteran drivers on the grid, and all of them have their own opinions about Max Verstappen. Want to hear exactly what they make of the Red Bull driver? Click this video right here.